Hello, everyone. Uh, my, name's, uh, my name's Ian Badger, and I'm going to be talking about uh, understanding English however it is spoken. OK, so where are we going in this talk? This is the main content. Um, challenges, OK? Uh, major, major challenges in, in, in listening and the value of using authentic listening. And when I'm talking about authentic listening, I'm talking about truly authentic listening, where uh, everything that we're doing is, is not scripted. We're just finding people around the world. I'll be talking about that more. Um, and I'll introduce the, the, the listening series and show some sample recordings. In fact, I must make this bit of the, the talk as short as possible because I want to get on to that because there's some really interesting stuff there. Okay, and, that, and that's really just stating what, uh, in, in, in one simple slide what I, what I feel. The world of business is that there's a, a massive range of people and that's what people need to, to work on. Okay, that doesn't mean to say that the, you know, my version of English, a kind of fairly clear English, whether it's my boring southern British English or uh, uh, Edinburgh English or, or, or an American English kind of it should be taught as a model to be clear because I want to improve clarity all the time. Okay. Um, this was a, a quote I found from uh, Simon Sweeney which I th found quite interesting. Um, basically what he was, he more or less said what I've just said that it's extremely important to have authentic materials. Um, but then he said that uh, discovering this supply is not actually easy. And he made a very important, uh, a very important issue, um, comment there, which is that most organizations, let alone individuals, would be reluctant to have their meetings, discussions, uh, presentations, phone calls, and social events recorded for classroom use by publishers, OK? Uh, schools or even teachers. And, when, and, and I've, this is an, an area of my interest all the time, and this is an issue that's come up all, you know, always. These are two books which uh, we've, Collins has published uh, recently, the, the, the uh, English for Business listening on, on uh, that side was published last year. And this one is actually my first uh, book that I've done for general English. Um, is being published in May. And I was just told, uh, actually, that uh, the, the one on the left um, has just been shortlisted for a British Council, Elton. So I think that we're also um, doing something which a lot of teachers and students around the world are oh, interesting. I was told to say that, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in these materials is scripted. Everything is, is, uh, is authentic. Um, and the idea is behind this is to sensitize learners to the kind of language which they're really going to, to come across. Okay? And then we get into the, the real features, because if you're just doing things which have been scripted, then you're not actually looking at the real features of language in many cases. But once you do look at real language, as the, those videos showed, then that's a different issue. So we have a range of accents. Sentences are fragmented. Okay? It's very strange to try and script all this stuff. <laughs> okay? As if it comes from the real, uh, the real thing, it's completely different. There are false starts. There's standard, non-standard grammar. There are mistakes. That's what happens. Now, that doesn't mean to say that within the book we want to leave people with incorrect English or non-standard English. But the key is, and this is a very interesting issue, is to analyse the language which we've got and just help people to understand it. If there are mistakes or if there are difficulties that people would have with so, uh, a, a perceived incorrect pronunciation, then we will gloss it and, and, and deal with it. That will give you an idea of the, the, the range of materials which we've had. We, we, we divide them into um, five, five sections, and then within that there are two or three recordings. Um, and you can see, for example, in the first section, Everyday Business Communication, uh, from Northern Ireland and from England, from East Coast US, Indian, um, English, Scottish, Irish, Indian, uh, Canadian, English, Chinese, Thai, so again, um, just taking a very, very wide range. And one will see the same kind of thing when we look towards the, the, other, the other book as well. And I'd like to give you an example of uh, one, which I think it, this is actually taken from the, it's in the first, uh, first unit, but it gives an, a, a flavor of the type of thing that we're wanting to do. We put this in um, this recording at, at the beginning because it also illustrates how uh, we feel native speakers or people with accents also, it's a two-way street, that they also need to moderate and help the listener. And I'm very interested in helping the listener. It should be um, two ways. But uh, also, it is an example of uh, Northern Ireland English. Certainly 30 years after leaving Northern Ireland, I, I would never uh, accept that I'm anything except Northern Irish. I think the accent is mellowed. I mean, the, 
the intonation has probably not changed very much. Um, I speak with quite a rising intonation, which has actually caused some problems with people who, at the end of a telephone conversation, when I've said, okay, well, I'll talk to you later, thought that I was asking another question and paused. So I'd try and say goodbye, and they'd say, what did you ask? <laughs> and this is really something very specific to do with the, the, the nature of my local English accent from Northern Ireland. It's very typical. There's a joke in my hometown that it, you don't need a road map to get around, you need the score. People say I speak very clearly, and I think it's because, you know, like Americans, we have an R. We don't drop the R, as in, in received pronunciation. And also, I think the vowels are quite round and, and quite strong. And I think over the years, I've actually modified the way I speak. I've slowed the speed of delivery down okay. quite a bit. So uh, we think that's a, a very interesting recording also to explore with our students, again, about modifying the accent okay, as well. And, and for them to be aware, I mean, I've done work with uh, native speaker managers as well and who are not being well understood. And I think just that kind of message is a, is a very useful one. Also for near native, one of the problems we have with our Russian, Russian and Finns is that some of our Russian speakers are extremely good. They're too good. Or they're too good in the way that they're very, very fluent. That doesn't mean they're too good in terms of their communication skills. Um, they have a slightly unusual intonation for the Finnish speakers. They speak extremely quickly, and they can't be understood. That said, their English is extremely good. They would they would get all the, they would get fantastic marks in their in their school exams. Okay, so these are all things to bear in mind. I, I think that's a, a, an interesting one. Right, something rather different. This is really I think also to demonstrate how even if your English is good. You can be good, whatever good is. Uh, you can be uh, more easily misunderstood than, by, than compared with someone whose English is perceived as poor. Um, hey, what do you think of uh, these? Some voicemails. Hi, Marie. It's Katrina calling. Uh, I'm just calling about the meeting we have scheduled for next Thursday at 3 o'clock. Unfortunately, I have another meeting that's come into my schedule um, that's on the other side of town, so I'm going to have to reschedule for another time. I hope you're free around 4, 4.30. If you could give me a call back, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Bye. How's that? Pretty good. I, it's a, I think it's a pretty good model, actually, of the kind of way to you know, leave a message. Where's she from? Canada. Canada. <laughs> Canada. Must have emigrated. Okay, so anyway, how about, how about uh, if I can find my, my mouse, how about this one? Hello, Paul. I'm sorry I cannot pick you up today, but you can go and meet me at the company. You just easily buy walk to the main road and catch the um, SkyTrain. Yeah, then you buy the ticket to the, uh, I forgot the place. <laughs> to the Piatai Junction, and then you take off, and then you may take the bus if you want to. The bus number 882, just tell them the company name, and they would know. Uh, but if you prefer the taxi, I'm sorry, I've gone, I've gone back. Where's she from? Thailand. Thailand, yeah, okay. Okay, but um, what about the message? Did you understand the meaning, what, what she said? Yeah, it's an interesting, when, when, I, when I played, I mean, just comparing, when I played, uh, let me play one more, and then we can actually assess the, about this one. Oh, hi, it's Nick. Um, terribly sorry, I've, I know we've got an appointment at three o'clock, but I'm currently sat on the M25 doing no miles an hour, and it's half past two, so I've got about an hour to, to run to get to you, so I'm going to be about half an hour late. Um, you know my mobile number, so give me a call if you need to talk to me. How about that? Right, okay, now from f having used this material with learners, uh, who's the easiest to understand? Probably the second one. <laughs> it's very, very slow and clear, and there are all kinds of things that she's taking off rather than getting off. <laughs> from, from, the, from the train and things like that. But actually, it's, it's, it, you know, the message is, is there. Uh, the fact that Nick sat on the M25 doing no miles an hour. 
<laughs> you know, I think it's also a message in, in that, that uh, that kind of thing is not necessarily very easy to understand, certainly for an intermediate level student. Okay? Now, I think there's quite a lot of uh, mileage in actually discussing you know, what makes for clear communication in this type of thing, in these types of uh, voicemails. But anyway, let me uh, move on. Okay, and now um, I, just a, a quick note. Um, we've, this book is uh, not yet published, but there are a couple of uh, books on the, on the stand, and this has uh, been written for uh, general use rather than specifically for business, so I'm sure business people will also be very interested in it, uh, for B1 to B2. Um, and I think we have more native speakers on, on this one. There are non-native speakers as well, okay, but they, they're not such difficult uh, non-native speakers to understand. But again, the same idea of sensitizing people. And, you okay. and um, I thought I'd give some, uh, also some examples of the, the types of uh, thing that we've got. I haven't written down where these people come from, so I can also ask you to say. Uh, okay, so listen to this one first. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, I find it easy to be. It's. It's quite nice to be an Indian in the UK because, in some ways, we get the best of both worlds. We're able to enjoy our culture and do the. You know, Indians are quite religious, so we have a place of worship where we live. Um, I'm a Sikh, so we have a Sikh temple where we live, and we go and participate. We try and go there regularly to uh, on weekends to participate in the community gathering. And on festivals, it's nice because there's a large enough Indian population in the UK for it to be a c celebration. I think Ken Livingston made, you know, um, one of our major, one of our Sikh New Year's is actually celebrated in Trafalgar Square every year in the spring. It's called Basaki. So he, he made a, he, I think he, he really, uh, really took a step. Went okay, a step. Stop you for a moment. And again, what we've got, okay, so what do we do? We've got nice, re okay, some very nice recordings, I think. Um, and now we're looking at general, general English, okay? So, the, I mean, this is a kind of interesting text that can be used in all kinds of situations. Um, but again, what we've been able to do in the book is also take and help with some of the cultural references. There is no reason why someone from Tashkent needs to know that Ken Livingstone was the uh, former mayor of London, okay? There's no reason at all. So, but uh, they might be interested, maybe, but probably not. Uh, so, th but those are the kind of things, to, to understand that kind of recording, that's the type of thing where we'll have a little note about that, just to make sure that these things are understood. As in business English, if, any, if you're getting any abbreviations or acronyms, then they should always be glossed and, and, uh, and, and made clear. I, I, I won't go through all these, but uh, just give a, a flavour of what's in. Thank you for calling the Tabard Inn. To reach the hotel or hotel reservations, press 1. To reach the restaurant or restaurant reservations, press 2. To reach our special events department, press 3. To reach the... I'll transfer you now. Tabardin. Hi, so I'm thinking about coming to your hotel um, in about six weeks' time. Great. Uh, what would the start date be to that? Um, it's uh, end of September, September 23rd, and I'd be checking out the uh, 25th. Okay, 23rd to the 25th, and that's a single room. Looking for. Well, I, I kind of I want to know the different options I've got available. Sure. Yeah, we have. Uh... <laughs> okay, uh, I could play quite a lot. They've, we've also got directions coming. So there's a, a, a good range of. Uh, we have American English. The next, the next one actually. Uh, is a New Zealander actually just talking about the differences between New Zealand and Australia. Uh, and the last one is um, a, a, a guy from Huddersfield. Uh, I can't remember his full name, Mohammed. Uh, something, but he, uh, so he's, he's, uh, he's got a, uh, a northern accent. From, uh, he's from Huddersfield giving tube um, announcements. So the next train, well, I'll, I'll play it. <laughs> Bacon. Ladies and gentlemen, your next train on platform two is your westbound Piccadilly line for an old station at Heathrow Airport. This train will be called the Acton Town, an old station at Heathrow Terminals 4, 1, 2, and 3. When this train approaches the platform, please make sure you stand behind the yard lines and let the passengers off the train first before boarding. Very important, you've got to stand behind the lines. <laughs> so, that recording could save your life. <laughs> 
It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so I think that's it, just to give a kind of idea of the kind of range of things that, uh, that, are, that, that are going on. Um, okay, time is moving. So let me just, uh, I, I've been talking away, I, I've been talking about help, the fact that we need to um, help the, the listener, but we also need to help the speaker. I think there's two sides, and, and as teachers we don't often have a chance to help the, the speaker, although actually... We do, we do, because particularly as our, as our students get more and more advanced, we also need, they need to also be aware of the, the audience that they've got and sometimes actually moderate their language, as Seamus was saying at the beginning. So um, how do you help this listener? Don't speak too fast. Give people time to think. Be aware. I think that's a really, really key issue that we need to help people with, to be aware of who you're talking to. Um, and this is an interesting thing because very often we're, when we're studying for our advanced exams, we're trying to learn very difficult idiom and complex structures. You know, I, I would have done it if you had told me and you know, I might be being called this afternoon. You know, <laughs> this type of thing that is seen as advanced and of course this type of thing in international communication call, uh, calls and whatever can cause misunderstandings. So I'm not saying that one shouldn't try to get your English up as high a level as possible, but nevertheless to be aware that in many situations when you're dealing with people who have intermediate levels that you shouldn't be using the most complicated language. Okay? Um, it's very often uh, the, the, the idiomatic language which causes problems. <coughs> so all of us use language which people don't understand and, and we need to kind of grow an awareness of, of that. Checking other people are understood and don't overwhelm the listener. Okay, and these are standard, but they are so important. Um, I've, I've got a handout, let's say, with some of these slides, and if people would like to see them, and also I'm sure that they'll be going up on websites, or um, I think you can leave your email address, and, and I'll make sure you get them. Um, so, okay, asking people to clarify. Asking the, the speaker to slow down, one of the main issues is, is people speak too fast. Okay, speaking up. Uh, we've got some nice examples in web conferences where... Uh, actually, people are, uh, their, their voices are trailing away and someone's saying, can you speak up, please? You know, that, and it's terribly important. I find, uh, working a lot with Finnish speakers, that they, they, don't, they just don't do these things. Okay? I, can, I can be monitoring a web conference and at the, ed, at the end of the conference I'm asking about key points in that conference and they say, sorry, I didn't understand it. But why didn't you say anything? Well, it was difficult. I didn't want to. Okay, so face-to-face -face or in a web conference situation, people don't do this. So this, just that slide in itself is terribly important, I think, in, in, uh, in, in business. And uh, you know, maybe in, in everyday life, people are more likely to ask. But in business, they, they don't. And yet that's maybe where it's even more important. Okay? In many cases, in everyday English, if our English isn't good enough, we let things go. We don't want to interrupt all the time because it's not necessary. We're still having some kind of conversation. I, I know that with my rudimentary German. If someone speaks to me in German, I don't understand what they're saying some of the time, but I don't keep saying, what is it? But I'm not doing business with them. So it depends where we are. So um, be more specific, be empathetic, and rephrasing. There are many other things. So this is a very quick summary of, of those issues. This one is also very interesting. Just a couple of websites. Um, this is... The Co Collins own website and what we did we had some fantastic recordings that we couldn't use um, and so we also went through those and we sent uh, we put quite a lot of those up on the website and that's just a free resource okay so there are some really interesting recordings often they build on what's in the book okay so we record a bit of someone in the book and then you can find more with the transcripts are, are, are there okay they don't have all the notes and all the rest of it, obviously which we've done within the book but that's definitely worth looking at and um, then, you know, I'm just extremely interested in helping people to understand English as it's spoken. So the others are just, I think, some really interesting websites which are worth looking at. A good, a good range. Um, and, and basically, this, just to, just to finish off, that's, you know, this is the kind of thing that we've done with the, with the, uh, the app on, the, on, on, on Seamus. You can see, um, you know, just li at this stage, you're listening very specifically for some words and hints and things, but we're following the same kind of global listening ideas through to uh, listening for very specific terms, being able to look at fo uh, check the vocabulary and, and the rest of it. Okay? We've overrun our time, so I'd better say thank you very much for, for coming, everyone. And, uh
Perfect.